Hi guys, welcome to this leak where today we're talking about citric acid. Now citric acid is used to adjust the pH of our um, fermentations, but it's also used for a different purpose, which we'll get to in just a little bit. Now, if you've any, ever done any training with us, either our C1 introduction to distilling course or the introduction section of our C10 comprehensive distilling course, you would know that the pH of a fermentation is quite important for the quality of the fermentation. Because if the pH is wrong for the yeast that I've chosen to use, it can put the yeast under stress. And the yeast under stress either ferments slowly or doesn't reach its maximum alcohol potential, or more importantly, it starts creating off flavors and congeners, or maybe not creating the flavors and congeners that I actually want during the fermentation process. So I don't get all the taste and aroma that I would like in my fermentation if the pH is not correct. Now, a rule of thumb is that our pH is normally too low. It's too acidic. So we add an alkaline, our preferred alkaline being potassium carbonate, to raise the pH to the level that we want. But if, let's say, for some reason my pH is too high, maybe in a grain fermentation, we use a very alkaline water source in the, um, uh, in the starch conversion process, or let's say I added too much potassium carbonate accidentally added too much now my pH is too high how do I bring that down to bring it down we use citric acid now again you can use any food safe acid um, to adjust your pH uh, citric acid is just our preferred one because as with potassium carbonate it reacts immediately there's no lag when you use citric acid so you can add a bit in you stir it you see a change add a bit more you stir it you see the change where with other acids there might be a slight lag and you can accidentally overdose because you think you've adjusted the pH correctly. Meantime, all of the acid you added has not finished reacting, has not finished affecting the pH level. So you're actually way too low, you're too acidic and you're going to have a problematic fermentation. That's the one use for citric acid. The other use for citric acid, and you will see this on our YouTube channel um, and uh, uh, when you go on the video, but how to clean stills and maintain stills, also mentioned in our article on our website as to how to treat, clean a still for first use, is the fact that we use citric acid for cleaning copper. Now, this is a larger, obviously, bag of citric acid, it's about a 500 gram bag. Now, when you clean a still, your preferred dosage, our preferred dosage, other people have different opinions, but this is our preferred methodology, use 100 grams of citric acid on 20 liters of hot water. Doesn't have to be boiling water, but hot water. 100 grams of citric acid on 20 liters of hot water. You can obviously use less than 20 liters and just reduce the amount of acid, but the ratio remains the same. It depends on how big the still is that you're cleaning. Now, if you've got 20 liters of water, whether you've got a five liter or even a 25 liter still, that should be sufficient for you to just dunk that entire still in this acid bath that you've now created. You uh, safety protocol says I have to tell you to use goggles and um, gloves, but it's not going to burn your skin. Believe me, these hands have been in uh, that acid bath many, many times. Been no detrimental effect, but safety precautions. I have to recommend that you use safety goggles and gloves when you deal with this. But you put the, the acid in the hot water, you put the copper in there, and you let it lie. That's all you need to do. Just let it lie in there for about five minutes, ten minutes, depending on how dirty the copper, uh, copper is, it will go pinkish. It will go clean, clean, clean. And you can check the video um, on our YouTube channel that shows you how to clean this still. It's very quick, very easy. No brushing required, no scrubbing required, uh, except if it's really, really, really compacted. Some people haven't cleaned their stills in years. I've seen stills that haven't been cleaned in decades. Yes, obviously, then you will need to scrub a little bit. But again, when you do that, don't go use a wire brush or anything like that. You want to use a soft kind of a plastic brush in order to scrub it. You don't want to damage the copper. Remember that copper is a soft metal. We don't want to damage it. Now, after you've cleaned it with citric acid, you need to rinse it really, really well. Otherwise, you might have a residue, um, especially inside your condensers or inside your vapor path. You might have a residue staying behind, which can affect your first distillate coming out of your still. Sometimes if you didn't rinse properly, you'll find blue distillate coming out of the still. Obviously, you can't use that, but it's normally not too much of a problem. You'll normally find that the heads, as that comes out of the still first, displaces that residue and everything thereafter is fine to use. You don't have to worry. If you did a really, really deep 
clean. Maybe you used a stronger acid or it was in there for a long time. It is a good idea to passivate the copper afterwards. And you do that by making a weak, weak potassium carbonate and water solution and just um, rinsing the, the copper with that solution just to kind of neutralize the acid residue so it doesn't negatively impact on the flavor profile of the next run or negatively impact on the copper if it stands unused for a long period of time. But normally just rinsing it with water is sufficient uh, after you've cleaned it with the acid. And so that is the two uses for citric acid, either adjusting pH or for cleaning the copper.